I know. I got so excited. I know. <laughs> Your little doggy. He's actually not that little though. Not, but he's the sweetest thing ever. <laughs> and it was the first time that I've seen him in months since the start of baseball season. Goodness. And so. It Do you was... ever worry that he's not going to recognize you? No, I mean we're it's we love each other so much. He literally for the whole week until I had to leave, he followed me everywhere. He, I mean, just every, he's he's the best. I, love I know him. everybody says that about their dog, but no. I truly think mine's the best. Though. I think everyone's dog is the best though. To them though, right? That's okay. So this is Friend Zone, and we went through about seven thousand names of shows, right? Yeah, and we this did. is the one we ended up on. Did we end up it or they just pick it for us? They just picked they it. Picked Here's it. the one thing I've got to clarify. Like my husband, Josh, not in the friend zone. You're dating Miss Universe. She's not in the friend zone. Yeah, she's not in the friend zone. But like no. we're in the friend zone. And Marcus yeah. Spears, when Marcus joins us, he's in the friend zone. Paul, Paul is somewhere. right there. He'll he, be in the friend zone. Yeah, he, he, we'll put, bring him in there too. <laughs> Paul, Paul's like in his own zone. Uh, we have Juice. <laughs> he's our producer. Juice is in the friend zone. Unfortunately. And Brooke is our other producer, and she'll be in the friend zone. Wait. Awkward. I don't know. Yeah, Juice, you yeah. want to be in the friend zone. Yeah, you want uh, to. I want to be here so that we can move this show along. No, oh, hey. no. First of all, Juice, I don't, want you, I don't want your first comment on the show to be something just so <laughs> negative to just move it along. No, it doesn't work like that, I Juice. Think Listen, the friend zone on this show is a good thing. It means yes. that we're friends. It means that we're in this together. See the SCC Nation crew? You know? That's it. Where's you know what? I love how family. Juice was like, I want to move the show along. Juice is the only one in the shade. So, like, <laughs> Juice wants to move the show along, but really? we're the ones baking out here. I know. Just yeah, we had this contraption where we had so the uh, umbrellas taped to it, but yeah. we had to make a, a quick audible. So, maybe next week. Yeah, we're going to be making Sounds audibles. Like an awesome story. <laughs> Sounds great from the shade. Full story, Juice. <laughs> Juice, what do you got for us? All right, us? cool. So, with headlines, basically, I'm just going to tee up like current events, things that are happening in the news today. Perfect. I like it. So the first one. They French were celebrating for you too, Jude. <laughs> they go, woo! Oh, let's go, perfect Jude. timing. <laughs> French children up to the age of 15 are prohibited from using their cell phone to in school. Okay. What do you think about that? Positive. Yeah, kids it's shouldn't positive. use cell phones. Not in school. I mean, it's okay. I get it. It's the millennial generation, right? They're they're using them, but yeah. not in school. I think that they should be. I mean, still have fun, but be kids. So when you're in school, put your cell phones away, put your iPads away. If you have to study with the, that's okay. But study, hang with your friends. When it's recess, go play. Yeah. Remember what it's like to kick a ball, throw it, catch, have fun, get dirty. You know, they don't need to stay on their phones all day. We saw a bunch of like, people old people. From the, like, I, like, I know. We're back on the night. I feel like my, dad. <laughs> my My mom is a teacher. Right She's here. here, and my mom is so Mrs. proud Brock. of you for saying that. <laughs> Actually, Mrs. McKeeman, because I know, I know, I know, I know it's okay. Yeah. Um, anyway. That's what happens when you're in the friend zone. Yeah, we're <laughs> in the friend zone, and that's why that happened. So anyway, yeah, I do think that kids probably shouldn't have their cell phone in school either. But I, but are they? I'm I think, passionate about it. I you got like that. fired up. Oh. We're actually millennials, though, so there's something different because you and I are millennials. But they're like younger millennials, though. So. Lara. Okay. All right, next one. Cool. This is a I this is a pretty a fun story. I I was like, I didn't have a cell phone. Junior in high school or senior maybe. What kind of cell phone did you have? It was the singular. Uh, <laughs> it was like singular, and it was the gray one that you had to flip open. Yeah. But I remember when I was at the University of Florida, and for Christmas, my brother Robbie bought me the razor. I thought it was the <laughs> sweetest thing ever. It's like what? Like I could look outside and see his call and then click it and put it back. No, it's cool. You screened was, everybody's call, right? You well, didn't when, answer anybody. When LSU was calling that weekend, all the death threats, yeah, I was screening all those. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Real quick, because I kind of forgot about that until you just brought it up. What happened there? Like, what was that like? I don't for know. Real? I guess just my number got out there. And so literally, I would pull my phone out of my pocket, and it, it would ring 24-7. I'm not exaggerating. It, <laughs> this, all day, all night, they would call. And I, I couldn't flip it open and close it without answering a call. That's how many calls I would get. From LSU fans. What did did you hear any of them? Like no, but anybody... I would hand it to like my teammates and they would answer it. And sometimes they'd be like so frustrated, stop calling them, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I never answered it one time. But the messages were horrible. Yeah, I won't ask you to repeat those. Thanks. Which teammate like had the best reaction? Pouncies for sure. What did they were probably they were just funny, going but off? Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave that there too. That's not in the yeah. friend zone. No, it's um, funny though. Did you change your? You must have changed your number like instantly, instantly. right? Instantly. Yes. And that's the current number that you have? <laughs> no, I've changed it again. How many times have you changed your phone number? 
More than once. Wow. All right, so what's your phone number? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Juice, what do you got? All right, next one. This is a feel-good story. So the yeah, linebacker like used, to, I like this. used to play for UCF, uh, Shaquem Griffin, yeah. one-handed. He has been called on to start in week one for the Seahawks. And what's really cool about the story is his twin brother, Shaquille Griffin, will also start at cornerback that week. I mean, it's... I get emotional thinking about it. I love it. It's so it's so amazing. No one thought that he would make it, but Coach Frost gave him a chance. He battled. They didn't think he would be a, a draft pick, but he killed the combine, just totally crushed it, and he's overcome so much. And and to play with your brother after no one thinking you'd even play college football, and now you're starting together week one for the Seattle Seahawks, that vaunted defense, and both uh. of them are on it. Like, what an amazing sports story. Like, it's so ESPYs, cool. there you go. Take that one. Yeah, I think we just need what you just said is like the intro speech. That was it right there. Yes, it's amazing. It's so cool. So I actually covered him in the draft and covered the whole family, and Shaquille was there too. And it was one of the, I guess it was probably one of the most difficult stories I've ever covered because he thought he was going to get drafted day two. And so we're actually, you know how this works at the draft. You're in that room and everybody's in there and it's like guys are going and you're like, okay, well, I think like maybe I'm a little better than that guy and he just got drafted before me. Guys are going one after the other. We're sitting in that room that entire next day, Friday of the draft, and he still doesn't go. And I, I actually had to look away a few times because I was getting emotional watching his family because I just knew how much they wanted it and how badly they wanted it. Then the following day was when he ends up going. I actually camped out outside of his hotel room waiting for them to get that call. Whenever we busted in that room, Tim, like his entire family crying, thanking God, praying. It was it, it was unbelievable. He, he's on the phone with Pete Carroll and he's like, I just can't thank you enough. Like it was. You know, you look back and think about it and you listen to you telling that story and you think, Obviously, he would have loved to have gone in the first or second right. rounds, but could it have been more special than the way it happened because Probably of, not. you know, Coach Carroll and the way he did it and going to play with his brother? Every time the Seahawks had a pick, too, we're like, okay, is it going to be this one? Because <laughs> we all wanted it so bad to happen that way, but um, also, he did it on his own merit. He did. Like, he, it's not just a feel-good story. He earned it. He's going to be dominant. I can't wait till he gets his first interception as, as an NFL player. You know what part really got me, though, in, like, watching the, the show about him was when he would strap up his, his wrist and yeah. he would bench press. Unreal. And, and his dad created I loved it. I know. It. I, just, I loved I know. it. Yeah. It's like, okay. go dad. Way to be an awesome dad and support and so cool. love your son. That's so cool. Um, Juice, what else? It's really hot out here, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yes, it's hard to <laughs> see you, Juice. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, Are you over there, Juice? Yeah, I am. I do feel bad that I'm in the shade. Like, <laughs> You don't feel sorry. that bad, though, because if yeah. you felt this, you'd be like, you, don't you know what? You feel bad enough to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tim, this Come one's... On. This one, uh... This one's a little bit closer to you. Uh, Florida's Felipe Franks over the uh, past weekend completed a jump pass. Yes. When you saw that, what'd you think? Um, I loved it. To be honest, I kind of figured that Coach Mullen was going to run it because um, he wants to bring back excitement. And so he knew bringing a jump pass would be fun. And honestly, I think Felipe probably could have just like walked in. It was so wide open. Um, but I, I <laughs> he think wanted to be you, though. <laughs> he wanted to do it. Honestly, he said he had never seen the jump pass before he did it. Okay. And I was like, I was just with him yesterday, and I was like, like, Coach Mullen, Felipe, what do you like? Do you not prep him? How do you not watch the yeah? Like, the There's like a lot of them to watch. Like, Newsflash, so. Felipe, that wasn't really the coolest thing you could have ever said about it, like that he had not seen it before. <laughs> By the okay. way, can I borrow one of your waters in here? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to take like I don't want to take one if you don't want me Snag to. Snag it. You don't get it. He's gonna be really mad at me later for taking this water. Okay, so yeah, I gotta ask you about. On one, so. Yeah, I know. So I gotta ask you about the jump pass though, for real, because what? What was the whole premise behind it? What did you see on the play when that you did everywhere. your jump pass? <laughs> <laughs> Let's um, have, actually, you would probably feel better right now if I poured this on top of you. It's that hot out here. Yeah, anyway. sparkling water, a little sticky. Mm. Well, you can keep your LaCroix. Um, Same. Honestly, I think it was a Tuesday afternoon. Coach Meyer showed us a play um, from Utah, they're playing Air Force, and they ran this sort of a jump pass, but it wasn't a jump pass. It was this, right. their fullback stepped up, stepped back, and kind of tossed it. You know, it was a touchdown, and. Oh, um, football, let's go. Baron, toss it in. 
Good job, Baron. Jump yeah, that would have been cool. Talking about the jump pass and you just under and toss it. <laughs> that was pretty Never lame. Never again. Okay. And so I watch it and I was like, okay, it's cool. But we go out to practice and we're get going against our defense and it's good on good. And so I was like, all right, well, I just got to do this thing natural. So I caught it and I just ran all the way to the line of scrimmage. And right when I got there, Brandon Seiler and our linebackers came up. And so at the last second, I jumped and kind of mm. jumped back and it was wide open. And I threw it to Tate Casey um, for the touchdown in practice. And I, I know it wasn't exactly how I was supposed to do it. Right. I looked at Urban and he was like, I like it. He's like, Charlie, how would you defend that? Coach Strong, our defense coordinator, was like, I don't know. And so he was like, just do it like that. And so wow. then against LSU, there's like 20 se seconds left in the first half. And he's like, we just call it timeout. And he's like, hey, listen, we have no more timeout. So whatever you do, don't come down with the ball. If Tate's not open, throw it out of the end zone so we can kick a field goal. So I ran out there and we run and I run up to the line of scrimmage, but Tate is getting held. So I jump and then I like double, triple clutch. And finally he gets off of it. But I was like, I'm not coming down with the ball. <laughs> and finally he gets off of it and I throw it to him. And that was the start of the jump pass. Did you think it would gain as much traction as it did then and even still now? I mean, I hate to age both of us a little bit because I was in school when this happened, but this is 10 years ago no, that this that happened. No, that was 12 years ago, ma'am. Good point. It was yeah. 12 years ago that this happened. That was 12 years ago. <laughs> Honestly, then probably not, but the more that we ran it yeah. and then um, we hit the game-winning touchdown pass against Oklahoma on a jump pass and then all of a sudden other teams started taking it and doing it because they realized, hey, this is a really good design play and it's extremely effective. And so they've continued to do it and it's worked for a lot of them. Is there anybody else that you've seen do it where you're like, oh, that guy gets it? Like, that's how it's supposed I to I thought um, Colin Klein from Kansas State was pretty good at running mm -hmm. it back in the day. I thought he did a good job and Bill Snyder set it up well and they kind of built things off of it. Yeah. And um, I thought he did a good job. Mississippi State, by the way, taking on Kansas oh, State. Zach did it pretty good. I was gonna yeah, say, Zach I, did it good. I would put him out there. Is yeah. it, I mean, yeah, but you gotta have some hops. Like you can't. Gotta just, have a vert. You gotta get up. Vert. What is your vert, by the way? Um, it was or, decent. It was decent, yeah. right? Yeah. Thirty and a half at the combine. I mean, sorry about remembering it exactly. <laughs> Humble brag. Actually, I did like set you up though, so yeah, <laughs> I was part I of that. I didn't bring it up. It was okay. I will say this, just my last little jump pass comment, because I'm obviously I'm a big fan of this. When I like when I was in school when this happened, it was nuts. Like everybody wanted to try to do it. You know how like every school has all these intramurals, but it's a big deal at Florida. All the intramural teams were like trying to do jump passes and like flag football, and everyone's like, "Yeah, we did the Tebow jump pass." Yes, thanks, towel. I'm sweating. Um, you know what's funny about it though is I'll still go be at places and like, or maybe we'll play playing basketball with my friends and they're like dribbling about a jump pass. <laughs> You're like, I, stop. I get it. It's not. It's not as funny anymore, but it's cool. I, know. I guess it's so. like an old joke. Kind of like we've had a few like old jokes on the show. Juice, continue on. One last thing before we get to our special guest. Uh, oh, we're yay. in Columbia, obviously, for the South Carolina Georgia game. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, South Carolina Georgia Columbia. game. First of all, just the area is Fireflies. Good area. Fireflies. Na, 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 na. Oh, I'm singing the wrong song. I don't know. It's cool. Anyway, Both yeah. Work. It's a good area. I think this place is going to be crazy tomorrow afternoon. Me too. About 3 29, getting ready for kick. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> But, okay, is this legitimately a game that you think South Carolina can win? Yeah, I do. I, I think I picked Georgia to be one of my playoff teams, but I think South Carolina, I think it matches up really well for South Carolina to give them a crazy game. I just yeah. think with Debo Samuel, I think Brian Edwards, Rico Dowdle, Jake Bentley, um, an improved defense, and then on the road for Georgia, a very young team. I just think it kind of sets up perfect for one of those upsets. I don't know if the South Carolina can get it done, but I think it's going to be a crazy game. Yeah. You know, somebody was bringing up the point to me earlier on Twitter. They're like, oh, because I was saying that maybe if Jake Fromm gets out there and it's a really hostile environment, it will be. It's going to be loud as all get out out there. Yes. Maybe he struggles a little bit. People start to talk about that and talk about his composure. And somebody's like, oh, remember he went week two on the road to Notre Dame. I get that. But that crowd was full of Georgia fans. Like, remember, but do you think, though, that that game is a good comp to Jake Fromm going on the road? A little bit, given, I mean, he was a, a true freshman, so he's a lot more mature that he's played in a semifinal in a national championship and true. an SEC championship. So he's, you know, has a lot more experience. But also remember that game, his defense won it. 
yeah. defense win the game. Good point. And he, he doesn't have Roquan Smith. He doesn't have Trenton Thompson. He doesn't have those outside linebackers that are, you know, Lorenzo Carter, and they're all over the field, right? Like, yeah. So he, they, they got to figure out some of this. And what happens if – South Carolina runs a little up-tempo. Debo hits them on a quick slant, goes 60, touchdown. They get three and out for Georgia. And now for the first time in however many weeks, they're, they're a little bit <laughs> right. behind. Now we got to pass it. We can't just stick with our running game. you got to be versatile. That's what scares me if I'm a Georgia fan a little yeah. bit. You know. Hmm. I like um, that. Hmm. Hmm. That was a hmm. hmm. You're making me think. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> one thing that I did think was funny that Paul Feinbaum actually told me is that Will Muschamp uh, came on his show and he was asking about that Jay-Z Beyonce concert, which, by the way, has gotten more love of any Jay-Z Beyonce concert. Because, like Everyone's like still talking about it. Um, but he said that Will Muschamp didn't know a single Beyonce song when he asked him. Do you? Like, if I asked you a Beyonce song, would you know one? Yeah. I mean, okay, I what? All the single ladies, but that's the group, though, right? I was burping, but I think it's Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child, but yeah. she was in it. It counts. It 100% counts. Okay, but... Do you know any others? Definitely. I love that that's, that's I love that that's the one that Tim knew. All oh. the single ladies. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, of all the it's, songs. It's a good song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> the dance was. Um, oh. I would say right. I would say Crazy in Love is a good one. I know that. But we're both Oh, Halo. Halo's a good Shout one. out to Annie with the Halo. I know. See, I know both of those songs. But you didn't know them off the top of your head. I didn't know them off the top of my head. So anyway, What's Coach Muschamp. for that, Laura. <laughs> we feel you, Coach Muschamp. All right, I guess that's enough Beyonce talk. See, but I would have oh, been, no, been able to sing along with some of the songs, though. Yeah. Yeah. You can sing along with a lot of songs, though. Um, I can't I tell wonder, you necessarily who, <laughs> who like sings for them. a lot of these songs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, you I'm have a lot of musical inclinations, though. I, I wonder not about, a lot of musical talent, though. No, no, no. I wonder about our next guest, uh, if they can sing. Do we, <laughs> do we know? Yeah, so who do with, we us, have? with us today is Susan O'Kane with Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Oh, my yes. goodness. They brought some animals <laughs> for us. Turtle. And I'll let her take let it her away. sit in the middle. Oh. Wait a Thanks. second. Yeah. Hi. This is, <laughs> hi. This is a Texas tortoise. This is Miss Piggy. Oh my goodness, Miss Piggy. This, you should have asked. That it's not a snapping turtle. No. Oh, is, yeah. I'm just going no right in. I would not have brought a snapping turtle to the set. Um, but no, she is a Texas tortoise. Hi. Um, and she is about. I'm talking to her like a dog. Like she's well, very, that's okay. Yeah. You totally get it. So Go she's, ahead. She's very friendly. Um, she is. She's been at Riverbanks for a little over a decade. Um, and she is about 40 years old. I um, mean, she is very what? friendly. You can um, you can touch her shell, and she actually feels that. Really? Um, yeah. All turtles and tortoises um, feel the scratches on their shell. Um, so while they don't have nerve endings actually in their shell, their their shell is connected to tissue um, cool. that does have nerve endings in it. So this is Miss Piggy, and did, she is one of our animal ambassadors. Did we bring her some snacks, or we what did. do we got here? So we can see she has some bananas and lettuce and apples. So we'll see if she uh, girl you what hungry? she does there. She might have this a little is bit like of, Tim Tebow's diet, well, actually, <laughs> except maybe a little bit of meat. Don't want her to uh, eat the turf, but we'll see what she does. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good thing. Look at Miss Piggy. I don't she want to put you on the spot, spot, but how long would a turtle like this live? Um, she could live up to 60 years, 60? Um, sometimes longer in um, human care, but she is 40 and um, median life expectancy around 60 years. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Miss Piggy, I mean, how many other debuts has she made on television so I feel like she's probably a pretty big she deal. has um, we use her her a lot to do media appearances yeah. but we also um, have her out in the zoo a lot she's one of our animal ambassadors so you might see um, her out in the park with one of our guest engagement and ambassadors um, interacting with guests she um, some of it. yeah so oh. she uh, and we actually oh. We actually have some larger tortoises at the zoo, our Galapagos tortoises, um, which are all, we have four of them, four adults, and they are... She's like, I'm um, getting that apple. <laughs> they are well over 100 years old. So, wow. Um, wow. Yeah, so what we know about those animals are um, they came into uh, the country in 1928, and at that time, um, when they came over from the Galapagos Islands, they were already adults. So, 
Uh -oh. um, they spent some time in other zoos and now they're with us and they've been breeding and we actually have um, in all about 28 Galapagos tortoises now wow. um, ranging um, in age from just a couple of months to again over a hundred so they're wow. great ambassadors for the species. <laughs> hey, guys, I, guys real quick, I gotta cut you off. Uh, we also have Sir Big Spur oh hanging goodness. out behind us oh. too. Oh. We got, we got, it's like a circus. We got a lot going on here. What? What is okay? <laughs> what? So many, so many, so many animals. Oh, we got right here. I was gonna say. So we're going a little different size spectrum. So this is a ten rack, oh my which is probably never heard of before. A what? Ten rack. A ten rack. A lesser ten rack. You got it. Yep. Perfect. So Sir Big Spur is just gonna hang out back there while we talk grown. other animals. You're more welcome if you want to feel him on his spines all over his back. This is Oscar. Ooh, I'm kind of nervous. Now, prickly. Oscar is not a South Carolina local by any means. In fact, they'd yeah. typically be found on the island of Madagascar. Wow. Wow. Like I said, this is full grown, so he gets to say this cute and adorable all throughout his life. Um, but instead of that kind of apples, bananas, Oscar much prefers to eat creepy crawlies, so things like mm. worms, crickets, which I think we actually brought some with. We did. Oh. Um, I'll, can I go down and get yeah, them? Go yeah, go get them. Yeah, we'll let Miss Piggy, she's kind of enjoy her <laughs> Miss snack. Piggy's like having a feast down here. And so, I'm specifically, serving I was going to say, yeah, right, I, yeah. I don't know what he's Spraying doing, but he's background. just here. Yeah. <laughs> But Oscar is a fascinating animal, and we actually brought an animal similar to Oscar. A lot of times when folks see him, they immediately think he looks like a, what does hedgehog. it look like to you? Thank you, a hedgehog. Yeah. We brought a hedgehog as well. Oh. So, shockingly enough, they're Sonic. not related. <laughs> I was gonna say, we always hear Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. You'd be shocked at how many little kids though don't know Sonic anymore. <laughs> oh, So yeah. well, we brought some game, worms. Guys. Susan, actually, oh. oh, they're called super worms. That's you, Laura. Okay, I got it, I got it. Um, You're gonna do it? I'll do it. Go yeah. for it. What I do want I you to do? hold it. You gotta, you gotta eat the first one. Ew. Ooh, I'm not gonna eat we'll it. We'll see. Do you think Pa would? He may or may not. No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you freaked out. Oh, he wanted it. So I wanted though. though. I totally Wait, five second, second rule. Five You're second right, rule. Yeah, okay. Oh, get back here, you worm. He, he, he doesn't. It's dirty. Oh, let's oh, go. Good job. Look at Oscar go. By the way, the, the violence that worm just experienced. Oh, you see those teeth? Yeah. Oh, he has some sharp little teeth. Oh, that is a big bite for Oscar. So that is his entire dinner. Okay. He's full after this. He's like. Ooh, he's still trying to get wow. it done. Yeah, that <laughs> worm is Are you in like agony a little right bit now. grossed out <laughs> or are you feel cool about it? We figured we'd bring a little bit of the creepy crawlies with, of course, too. Oh, wow, he's got Oscar. the tail end. Yeah, Oscar is. Big bite. Ew. Okay, now he's had a snack. We're going to. And meanwhile, Mr. We'll Piggy's like, still going. Go yep, I'll grab the next one. Okay. <laughs> you know, I kind of feel bad for Sir Big Spur back here because no one's really given him any love, but know, he was, but he was meanwhile, talking. All, all the food's gone. Uh, I like. Miss Piggy, you're really living yeah. up to your name. So she loves to snack, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> she is a big time snacker. Hey, girl, but you got this stuck. Is it stuck in your tube? Don't. Yeah. Be careful. Don't let her. She'll take. She'll bite with me. Her. Well, oh, yeah. she. Well, just because she'll be eating the food. She's like, she'll excuse think, oh, well, me, food, get out so of my way. A finger too, but it's weird though. The apple kept getting stuck in her tooth. It was yeah. making me worried. She'll, don't worry, she'll make her way through it. <laughs> Most She's definitely. Like, Calm down, girl. Okay. A little bit more familiar with this critter. Yeah. That would be you're Sonic. Right. You guessed it right on. This is a hedgehog. Do we touch him or is he? If you're brave enough, go for it. So. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say a little sharp. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So sharp. all those spines, don't worry though. They're stay connected. They're not gonna throw wow. them or anything like that. The worst thing that Kylie here might do is she might make a grunting noise and kind of get them to stand all up. She's trying to scare her. How do we horse. make her do that? Like, I So the only way I can it. make her do that is to scare her. Oh, I don't want to do that. Exactly. I feel bad. Yeah. But sometimes, if you notice, on their bellies, they don't have any of those spines. So they'll actually <laughs> roll up into a ball, just like Sonic oh, the Hedgehog. Yeah. Yep. So sometimes they'll nap like that. When they're extra surprised, they'll do it. They have a muscle that will actually cinch it all in, kind of like a little backpack. So that way, all you see are those spines. Now, do you want to take a guess how many spines they have on the back? Go for it. I mean, Somebody's got to win. It's like, um, <laughs> 3,000. Oh. You're really close, actually. Oh, I was going to say like 500,000. I am so oh, bad at yeah. <laughs> things about 4,000. You're really close. Yeah, what? Let's go. How did you do Sometimes that? Like you're like 100, 500,000. Yeah, it's about 4,000 of them. Ms. Does she finish her entire song? On the move. Yeah, she well, she She's might give a test out of the you know hey, yeah, it's, our, it's our demo set. Go just, ahead. We'll we see just she does. got this new field and it's actually not edible. <laughs> I don't know how to break that to you, but you should yeah, need she'll, it. She'll have to learn pretty quickly. She has a little bit of an apple. It's okay. Rubber. I don't think she's going to get to the edge before we end this show. Are so. you making turtle jokes? <laughs> she's really You just might be faster than her. I think you should be good to go. I mean, listen, <laughs> slow and steady wins the race. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. I read it too, oh. Laura. <laughs> <laughs> All right. By the way, the fact right, that guys. Sir Big Spur is like I know, just hanging, out, lingering in the background I know. every other day is great.
So thank you to Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Thank you, Riverbank. Thank you, Riverbank. Thank you. Thank you. Super <laughs> interesting and fun. Thank you, Miss. I learned a lot. I did too. You guys can take the worms, though. Uh, we actually don't want those. If Marcus Tim, was here, though, do you think? You know what he would say is that they're very high in protein, so and there's somebody <laughs> here that they actually are very high in protein. Likes protein. Get some yeah. Fries, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I think that was it. I don't for know if worms zone. were on the keto diet. Good job on Friend Zone. Solid. I feel like it was a good show. I How many tell by pit the sweat. stains do we have? Seven. Yeah. Pits that we didn't even know we had. Bye. <laughs> Time out. <laughs>